What a glorious new day this is. Welcome to Grace St. Luke's Church. My name is Ollie Rencher. I'm delighted to be a part of worship today. And for those of you who are joining us remotely, we give thanks that you are able to be with us as we hold you in our hearts and prayers and thanksgivings this day. In our service leaflet, for those of you, of course, joining us online, there are comments and notes in the back about various events that are taking place. If you are a visitor to us, please take a moment to complete an online connect card. Uh, we just released our next edition of the Messenger magazine. You'll see a notice about it. It looks like this, and you can also find it on our website. But a great deal of information about life at Grace St. Luke's that takes us into the winter and spring. So please find that and start to dig into it. Uh, this is a day at Grace St. Luke's where we also celebrate our founding. In the year 1940, um, the Churches of Grace and St. Luke's gathered for a service, and now we give thanks for it, though in a very different way, because we um, are more at home and with our families in other ways, but today our hearts are full of gratitude. We give thanks for the gift of music, of worship this day, and of course for God's word and sacrament. And now we will meditate on our opening hymn, but again, welcome. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, 
Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to all Israel, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding to you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from Flint Rock and let, fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly by whole verse, Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy.
Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today we join people throughout the world beyond this nation in this time of thanksgiving for God's abundance, blessings known and unknown. Our hearts are full this day. This day is a very unusual day in the life of the world and in the life of the way we would be spending this time, I suspect, for most of us. And yet we are here. We have been resilient. We have lots for which to be grateful. So we are here right now, even as our hearts are longing to be with others, particularly family and friends in ways. A lot of grief is unfolding as we speak, as even we gather in worship in this moment, and yet we are here. Today I am particularly mindful of a friend who shared that we should be actively giving thanks every day. That seemed like a natural thing for a person to say, and how often have you said it or have I said it? We should just be grateful every day, right? Well, this friend spoke specifically about the gift of life and seizing life as a time for personal transformation. I wasn't quite sure where this was coming from when this conversation started, but our conversation came as he reflected on his time in hospital due to coronavirus. He had not made many people aware of this. It definitely caught me off guard. I had not spoken with him in quite some time, but that's how life goes, right? How often do we not speak with someone for a long time? But he had a long stretch on a ventilator and was in ICU, and he shared about his story, and on this side of what could have gone another direction, his perspective was a staggering one. It was a humbling reminder to me about the gift of each day that, that I take for granted or sort of do whatever I want to do in most days until I realize that I might not have that next day. And the opportunities that we are afforded, you and I both throughout the world, if only we would seize them for the betterment of ourselves and other members of the human family. If we would live life as each day being our last. But that's hard to do. That's hard to do for a host of reasons. But in speaking with my friend, it became more real to me because I was looking at him as a miracle based on what he described about his health and his welfare. As our celebrations unfold, we at Grace St. Luke's give special thanks for the occasion of 80 years ago, 80 years ago, when the people of Grace Church and St. Luke's Church got married, as I call it. There was a big wedding, and they gathered for a joint worship service on Thanksgiving Day. 80 years ago. In 1940, our mission was to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. And this mission has not changed. That is who we continue to be as the church, as is 
provided for us, reminded to us in the catechism. And so 80 years later, we are strong, my friends. We are thriving. And in 2019, we even adopted a rather bold vision. Our new vision is to be a thriving community of hope, belonging and healing through worship, parish life and service, and who rejoices in the love of Jesus to transform the world. That's pretty heavy, and yet it is beautiful. I'm grateful to be a part of such a community that holds such values as important. And so on this particular Thanksgiving Day, when we, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, find ourselves physically distant from our family and friends and even traditions, I am struck by a certain part of our vision statement. We express a desire of longing, or what one might call a goal, to be a community who rejoices in the love of Jesus to transform the world. That's huge. That's exciting. It suggests something from us. We may be prepared and we may not be prepared, and yet it is a part of who we are, and it is all rooted in the baptismal covenant of who we seek to be as Christians in this corner of God's kingdom at Grace St. Luke's Church in Midtown Memphis. As Christians, my friend, we look to Jesus for instructions, instructions on how to be and live and serve in the world because he is the way of love that will transform the world. He is the one we follow. And so following his ways, making them our ways, is bound to bring about the kind of transformation that will get us closer to experiencing the kingdom of God right here and right now and not worrying about what happens when we die. Our rejoicing in the love of Jesus to transform the world is making individual and collective commitments to be agents, partners with God in the business of justice and peacemaking at every opportunity where they are absent. That is our work, that is our baptismal work, even as we find ways to do it. Transformation. Transformation, the change of heart and action, is the work to which we are called by an abiding faith in God, especially during this season of a pandemic. Many have talked about, and I have too, especially about being bored, trying to figure out how to spend this time, being alone, not being able to interact in ways that would be more life-giving. That's natural, right? We are people of relationship. We are people of interpersonal. We are people who are used to being together. And while many often refer to this time as a time of inconvenience, that breaks my heart to think about that as I have thought that at times and know that others say that often. This time is really about an inconvenience. I offer that it actually is a time for transformation. It is a time for our transformation in all sorts of ways that will help us both to be ourselves and to benefit others, we can use this time for sacred purposes and to have amazing things unfold within ourselves and around ourselves, beyond ourselves and throughout the world. Yes, we are resilient. We're here, right? But as we continue to be resilient and acknowledge those who have been infected by and died from coronavirus, those who have cared for them and continue to care for them, as well as their family and friends, may we be so transformed in thought and word and deed. It seems that that is the least we can do as others are dying. The changes in traditions and plans and freedoms that I know I definitely enjoy and suspect you do too are the least of that which we could be concerned. It is natural, of course, but while growing numbers of people are sick and dying throughout the world, how we live in this time is important. And my friend got my attention when we spoke. He reminded me that the gift of life in and of itself is enough to celebrate. I wish I could do that more naturally. 
And if you're doing it, I'd love to hear how you're doing it because it doesn't always come that easily. And yet we come to the gospel, right? Today's gospel lesson is a story about transformation, about having the kind of faith that will make us well and that will make this broken, unreconciled world well. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus encountered ten lepers who, keeping their distance, cried, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And as they went to show themselves to the police, they were made clean. Something was changing even as they went. They hadn't arrived, right? They just were on their way. And they were being made clean. The healing already had started. One leper who saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself, as the story goes, at Jesus' feet, and he thanked him. He was a Samaritan who culturally at that time was considered an outcast. He was not the one who would typically be showing such reverence for God in Christ Jesus, and yet he did. And Jesus asked a question, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, get up and go on your way, your faith has made you well. Well, friends, it was his doing what Jesus asked of him that changed his life forever. It was trusting Jesus' commandment and hoping that new good things would come, and they did. And so today we find ourselves in thanksgiving, thanksgiving for the gift of life and our faith, a time for transformation. We have strength for the journey through moments like this where we gather in word and sacrament. Whether we are here in person or online, we are gathering strength for the journey. And it reminds me of the Reverend Renee Miller, who reflects on gratitude in her book, Strength for the Journey. Her rich insight on gratitude practice impresses me as relevant to this holy time in our lives and as the world is unfolding in so many different ways as we might spend this time paying attention to the important work of personal transformation. In closing, I leave us with these words about practice and maybe they resonate with you in ways that they have resonated with me. Renee Miller writes, Gratitude practice is beneficial for every spiritual personality. It is both an internal practice and a practice of ministry. We find our own selves and souls expanding every time we feel and express gratitude, and when we're grateful, we find that our lives expand as well. Those who are grateful bring grace into the lives of others. Gratitude builds on itself, and when we grow in gratitude, others grow in theirs. One moment of gratitude leads to another, and in the end, we have hearts filled with you. Hearts filled with joy. My friends, may we on this day, celebrating the history of this great parish 80 years ago, and all of our many blessings, may our lives be ones of transformation and may we walk by faith and not by sight and trust that God will always do new things with and through us. Amen. Please stand. Let us profess the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the merger of Grace Church and St. Luke's Church into one house of prayer and parish community, we give you thanks for the fellowship of those who have gone before us and those who have worshiped in this place. And we pray that all who seek here and are fed from your altar may find you and be filled with your joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. 
Let us greet each other in the name of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. At this time, we give thanks for all of God's gifts, and as our Offertory is offered this day. We are mindful of the gifts that make life at Grace St. Luke's possible. Uh, today is a perfect day to offer your pledge to support life at Grace St. Luke's. Uh, members and non-members alike may pledge to support this wonderful community and we give thanks for all of those. You may go to our website and at the giving tab there's immediate information to do so and during the service there's also a way to text to give or you may send in other gifts to the church office. But please know that all that you do, especially in this season of gratitude, is to further the ministry of this parish, which for 80 years has made an impact in the city and will continue to do so and be sustained by our collective gifts. And so every amount matters, and the generosity that comes with heart will only make it stronger. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and to die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Congregation may be seated. During the distribution of communion, I will come to those of you who are gathered here in the worship space um, as I will be wearing my mask. And you are, of course, to keep your mask on and after passing by you to receive um, the bread in that moment. Those of you who are joining us online, we have provided a prayer, a set of prayers for spiritual communion. So although you are not physically able to be with us, you are connected us to in heart. And so please offer those prayers during this time.
Please stand. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 